gather round, dear mortals, and prepare yourselves for a tale of mystery, darkness, and bloodlust. We are about to embark on a journey through the history of vampires, the legendary creatures that have haunted our imaginations for centuries. From ancient folklore to modern pop culture, these immortal beings have captured our attention and our fears, leaving a lasting impact on the human psyche. The concept of vampires has been around for as long as human civilization, with stories of blood-sucking demons and otherworldly creatures found in nearly every culture around the globe. But what is it about these enigmatic beings that has captivated us for so long? Is it the allure of immortality, the danger and seduction of the unknown, or perhaps the undeniable fascination with death and the afterlife? Whatever the reason, the mythology of vampires has endured, evolving over time to reflect the fears and desires of each new generation. Join me on this journey as we explore the rich and varied history of vampires, from their ancient origins to their modern-day portrayal in literature, film, and beyond. Vampires have been a part of human mythology for centuries, and ancient cultures all over the world have their own versions of these bloodthirsty creatures. These myths typically involve undead beings that feed on the living, but there are many variations in how they are depicted and the powers they possess. In ancient Sumerian mythology, there was a demon known as the Lilu that was said to prey on pregnant women and infants. Similarly, in Babylonian mythology, there was a demon called the Yutaku that possessed the bodies of its victims and caused disease. The ancient Egyptians also had their own version of the vampire in their mythology, known as Sekhmet. This goddess was often depicted with the head of a lioness and was said to have a thirst for blood. According to myth, she was responsible for plagues and epidemics and could be appeased by drinking wine mixed with animal or human blood. In Greek mythology, the Lamia was a female demon that preyed on children. She was often depicted as having the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent, and was said to be able to shape shift into a beautiful woman to lure in her victims. The concept of the vampire was also present in Slavic mythology, where it was known as the Strigo. These creatures were said to be able to shape shift into animals such as wolves or bats, and were believed to be able to transform themselves into mist to enter people's homes. They were also said to have a thirst for human blood and could only be killed by being staked through the heart or decapitated. In China, the Jiangxi is a type of vampire-like creature. It is said to be the reanimated corpse of someone who died violently or before their time. Jiangxi are typically depicted as hopping, rather than walking, and have long white hair and long sharp fingernails. According to legend, the Jiangxi can be defeated by attaching a piece of yellow paper to its forehead, which will render it immobile. The Mayans also had their own version of the vampire in their mythology. The Camazotes was a bat-like creature that lived in the underworld. It was said to have a taste for human blood and would sometimes fly up to the surface to feed. While these ancient myths may not have the same characteristics as modern vampires, they are the earliest examples of the undead preying on the living. It is possible that the idea of vampires evolved from these earlier myths, and many of the same themes, including immortality, blood, and death, can be seen in both ancient and modern versions of the vampire. But worldwide vampire lore doesn't end there. In Japan, the yuri is a type of ghost that is often associated with vampire-like behavior. The yuri is said to feed on the life force of its victims, draining them of their energy and leaving them weak and lethargic. The yuri is often depicted as a pale ghostly figure with long hair and a haunting presence. In Latin America, the chupacabra is a creature that is said to attack and kill livestock. The chupacabra is often described as having a reptilian appearance, with spines or quills along its back. Some people believe that the chupacabra is a vampire-like creature 
that feeds on the blood of its victims. In Hindu mythology, the Vitala is a type of vampire-like creature that is said to inhabit corpses. The Vitala is often depicted as a malevolent spirit that can possess the bodies of the living and manipulate them to its will. These are just a few examples of the many different types of vampire mythology that exist around the world. While the details of each myth may vary, there are often similarities between them. Many vampire myths involve creatures that feed on the blood or life force of their victims, and many are associated with death and the undead. Within these cultures, it's important to remember that vampirism doesn't exist in a vacuum. In many cultures, vampire mythology is intertwined with the beliefs and practices of folk magic. Folk magic refers to a range of traditional practices that are based on the belief in the supernatural and the use of spells, charms, and rituals to achieve a desired outcome. In many cases, these practices were used as protection against vampires and other malevolent spirits. In Slavic folklore, for example, garlic was thought to have the power to repel vampires. It was often used to make wreaths or hung on windows and doors to prevent vampires from entering homes. Other protective measures included placing a bowl of salt or a broom behind a door, as it was believed that vampires had to count every grain of salt or bristle on the broom before they could enter a home. Many of these beliefs survived countless reinterpretations and have become a key element of vampire law. In Romanian folklore, the Strigo was said to be able to transform into animals such as wolves, bats, or owls. To protect against Strigo, people would place thorns or wild roses on the roofs of their homes, as it was believed that the creatures could not step on the thorns without being injured. Similar beliefs and practices are found in other cultures as well. In many African countries, for example, it is believed that vampires can be repelled by sprinkling salt around the perimeter of a village or home. In China, mirrors are sometimes placed facing outward to prevent vampires from entering a home, as it is believed that they will become frightened and run away when they see their own reflection. In addition to these protective measures, there were also rituals and spells that were believed to have the power to ward off vampires. In some cultures, it was believed that carrying a piece of bread or wearing a piece of clothing that had been blessed by a priest could provide protection against vampires. In other cases, spells were used to prevent vampires from attacking, such as reciting a chant or drawing a specific symbol. The beliefs and practices associated with vampires are as diverse and varied as the cultures in which they exist. From ancient mythology to modern day popular culture, the vampire has been associated with a wide range of rituals, charms, and other practices that are believed to ward off or protect against these creatures of the night. Another practice associated with vampires is the use of crosses or other religious symbols. In Christian tradition, the cross is believed to represent the triumph of good over evil, and as such, it is often used as a weapon against vampires. This belief has been popularized in vampire fiction and movies, with many depictions of vampires recoiling in fear at the sight of a cross. In some cultures, iron is believed to have the power to repel or harm vampires, with iron horseshoes and nails being hung over doorways and windows to keep vampires at bay. The use of mirrors is also sometimes associated with vampires, with some believing that the reflection of a vampire cannot be seen in a mirror. Other practices associated with vampires include the use of holy water the wearing of silver jewelry, and the use of certain herbs and spices. In some cultures, a stake through the heart is believed to be the only way to kill a vampire, while in others, decapitation or burning is considered the most effective method. While these beliefs and practices may seem quaint or superstitious to modern audiences, they played an important role in the lives of many people throughout history. They offered a sense of comfort and security in a world that was often dangerous and unpredictable. And while we may no longer believe in the existence of vampires, the enduring popularity of vampire mythology suggests that they continue to capture our imagination and inspire us to explore the mysteries of the supernatural. While vampires can be traced back to ancient mythology and varying folklore from around the world, it was in Europe that the concept of the vampire really took hold. In Eastern Europe, particularly in the regions of Transylvania and Wallachia, stories of the undead had been circulating for centuries. In these legends, the vampire was a reanimated corpse that had risen from the dead 
to prey on the living. They were said to be able to turn into bats, wolves, or mist, and they had to be killed by being staked through the heart or decapitated. In the 18th century, reports of vampire attacks began to spread throughout Eastern Europe. These attacks were said to be carried out by individuals who had died and returned as vampires. The only way to stop them was to exhume their bodies and drive a stake through their hearts. These reports gained widespread attention in Europe, and soon the concept of the vampire had become part of the popular consciousness. In 1819, John Polidori published The Vampire, a short story that is considered to be one of the first works of vampire fiction in English. While the vampire has become a beloved figure in modern culture, it's important to remember that its origins lie in the folklore of Eastern Europe. The legends of the undead that were once used to explain mysterious deaths or plagues have since become a source of inspiration for writers, filmmakers, and artists around the world. From the ancient myths of Lilith and Sekhmet to the vampire attacks of Eastern Europe and the seductive charms of Count Dracula, the vampire has undergone many transformations over the centuries. Yet the fascination with this dark and mysterious figure remains as strong as ever. Whether it's the allure of eternal life, the thrill of danger, or the fantasy of transcendence, there's something about the vampire that continues to captivate and intrigue us to this day. It's true that vampire mythology has been with us since the dawn of man, but the modern conception of the vampire was solidified with the notorious acts of one man, Vlad the Impaler. Vlad III was a ruler of Wallachia, a region in what is now Romania, in the 15th century. He was known for his brutal methods of execution, including impalement, which earned him his infamous nickname. During his reign, Vlad faced a number of threats from neighboring empires and had to fight to keep his kingdom independent. He was a skilled military strategist and is credited with a number of key victories over the Ottoman Empire, which was then expanding into Eastern Europe. It was during these battles that Vlad's reputation for cruelty and brutality began to spread. He was known to impale his enemies on large stakes and leave them to die slowly, a method of execution that was intended to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies. While Vlad's methods may seem extreme by modern standards, they were not unusual for the time. In fact, impalement was a common method of execution in Eastern Europe at the time, and Vlad was far from the only ruler to use it. It wasn't until several centuries after Vlad's death that his reputation took on a new dimension. In the late 19th century, Bram Stoker was researching his novel Dracula and came across accounts of Vlad's reign. He was fascinated by the brutal ruler and saw in him the perfect inspiration for his vampire character. Stoker's Dracula is a charismatic and seductive figure who uses his powers of hypnotism and mind control to lure his victims to their deaths. He is also associated with Transylvania, a region in Romania that has become synonymous with the vampire in popular culture. While Vlad the Impaler and Count Dracula may seem very different on the surface, there are some similarities between the two. Both are associated with violence and death, and both have become larger-than-life figures in popular culture. Today, Vlad the Impaler is a popular tourist attraction in Romania, with visitors coming to see the ruins of his castle and explore the region's association with the vampire. While the real Vlad may have been a far cry from the seductive and immortal Dracula of popular fiction, his reputation has helped to cement the vampire's place in popular culture and ensure that his legacy lives on. The idea of the vampire as we know it today owes a great deal to literature. From the early Gothic tales of John Polidori to the best-selling Twilight series, vampire stories have captivated readers for centuries. In 1819, John Polidori published The Vampire, a short story that is considered to be one of the first works of vampire fiction in English. The story, which was inspired by a competition between Polidori, Mary Shelley, and Lord Byron, tells the tale of Lord Ruthven, a mysterious nobleman with a dark secret. Polidori's story was a sensation, and it helped to establish many of the conventions of vampire fiction. The idea of the seductive and mysterious vampire, who preys on the innocent, would become a hallmark of the genre. Another influential Gothic vampire story was Sheridan Le Fanu's 1871 novella, Carmilla, which tells the story of a young girl 
who is visited by a beautiful and enigmatic woman named Carmilla, who is revealed to be a vampire. Carmilla is notable for its exploration of themes of sexuality and desire, and has been cited as an early example of lesbian literature. But it was Bram Stoker's Dracula that really cemented the vampire's place in popular culture. The novel, published in 1897, tells the story of a vampire from Transylvania who travels to London in search of new victims. It introduced the character of Count Dracula, a charismatic and seductive vampire who has become one of the most iconic figures in horror fiction. Stoker's novel inspired countless adaptations and imitations and helped to establish the modern concept of the vampire. Stoker's novel did more than introduce us to the notorious Count. It also brought forward the archetypal image of the noble and relentless vampire hunter in the form of Abraham Van Helsing. Van Helsing is a Dutch doctor and expert in the occult who is called upon to help destroy the vampire Count Dracula. He uses a combination of traditional weapons like wooden stakes and crosses, as well as more unconventional methods like hypnotism and blood transfusions to defeat the vampire. In reality, there were many individuals and groups who claimed to be vampire hunters throughout history. In 18th century Europe, for example, there were many cases of people digging up graves and desecrating corpses in search of suspected vampires. These actions were often motivated by a belief that a recent outbreak of disease or other misfortunes in the community were the result of a vampire's curse. One famous case of vampire hunting occurred in Rhode Island in the 19th century. In 1892, a woman named Mercy Brown died of tuberculosis and her family began to suspect that she was a vampire. They exhumed her body and found that it had not decomposed, leading them to believe that she was feeding on the life force of her family members. The family burned her heart and liver and mixed the ashes with water, which they gave to Mercy's brother, who was also sick with tuberculosis. He died soon after, and the incident helped to fuel the myth of the vampire in America. While vampire hunters may have been motivated by a belief in the supernatural, their actions often had very real consequences. In many cases, they desecrated graves and mutilated corpses, causing great distress to the families of the deceased. Their actions also helped to perpetuate the myth of the vampire, as tales of their exploits were often embellished and passed down through generations. In modern times, the idea of vampire hunting has largely been relegated to the realm of fiction. However, the legacy of these hunters lives on in popular culture, where they continue to inspire stories of brave individuals who are willing to take on the undead. The true power of the vampire, however, lies not in our history or in science, but in our collective imagination, reflected in the realm of literature, film, television and art. Vampires have been a staple of gothic horror since the genre first emerged in the late 18th century. From the mysterious Count Dracula to the tortured Louis de Port du Lac, vampires have captured the imaginations of readers and viewers alike offering a potent mix of sexuality, power, and mortality. At their core, vampires embody the idea of immortality, a theme that is central to much of Gothic horror. By living forever, vampires represent a rejection of the natural order of life and death, and their immortality often comes at a great cost. In many stories, vampires must survive by feeding on the life force of others, offering a stark commentary on the price of eternal life. In addition to their immortality, vampires are often associated with themes of sexuality and power. In many stories, the vampire is portrayed as a seductive and alluring figure, using their otherworldly charms to lure their victims to their doom. This representation of the vampire as a sexual predator reflects cultural anxieties around desire and temptation, and speaks to our fear of losing control to our base desires. At the same time, Vampires are also portrayed as powerful and formidable creatures, capable of supernatural feats such as flight, transformation, and mind control. This power often comes at the expense of the vampire's humanity, with their transformation into a creature of the night, representing a loss of their former self. Despite their fearsome reputation, vampires have also been portrayed as tragic and sympathetic figures. In works such as Anne Rice's interview with the vampire, and the television series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Vampires are depicted as complex individuals struggling with the consequences of their immortality. 
These stories offer a more nuanced view of the vampire, highlighting the internal conflict and emotional turmoil that can accompany such a long and lonely existence. In all of these representations, however, the vampire remains a potent symbol of mortality and the unknown. Whether we see them as frightening or fascinating, their enduring appeal speaks to our fascination with the mysteries of life and death, and our desire to understand the world around us. Of course, no vampire story can compare to that of Dracula. The book that started it all has spawned an entire industry of adaptations and interpretations that have changed the way we think of the infamous Count. The first of these adaptations was F.W. Manow's 1922 silent film, Nosferatu, a landmark in the history of vampire mythology and the horror genre. Due to copyright issues, the filmmakers were forced to make several changes to the story and characters of the original novel. One of the most notable changes was the portrayal of the vampire, which was renamed Count Orlok and given a distinct look that differed from the suave and charismatic Count Dracula of Stoker's novel. With his gaunt features, pointed ears, and long claw-like fingers, Count Orlok was a terrifying and otherworldly creature, a departure from the more human-like vampires that had been portrayed in previous adaptations of Dracula. The success of Nosferatu helped to establish the vampire as a staple of the horror genre, paving the way for countless films and novels that would follow. The film's influence can be seen in the way that subsequent filmmakers approached the vampire, with many choosing to emphasize their monstrous and terrifying qualities rather than their seductive and alluring side. Beyond its impact on the horror genre, Nosferatu also had a lasting impact on vampire mythology as a whole. The distinctive appearance of Count Orlok, with his bat-like ears and rat-like teeth, has become a recognizable icon of the vampire, inspiring countless artists, writers, and filmmakers. The film's influence can also be seen in the way that vampires have been portrayed in popular culture outside of the horror genre. The distinctive look of Count Orlok has been referenced and parodied in everything from cartoons to fashion, and the term Nosferatu has become synonymous with the vampire in popular culture. In addition to its impact on vampire mythology, Nosferatu is also a landmark in the history of cinema. Manau's use of light and shadow to create a sense of dread and foreboding has had a lasting influence on filmmakers, and the film's innovative use of special effects, including time-lapse photography and double exposure, set a new standard for the horror genre. Despite its age, Nosferatu remains a powerful and influential work, a testament to the enduring appeal of vampire mythology and the power of cinema to terrify and captivate audiences. Its impact can be seen in countless films and novels that have followed in its wake, and its place in the history of vampire mythology and the horror genre is secure. While Manau's film is a masterpiece of silent cinema, the most famous adaptation of Dracula is undoubtedly the 1931 film starring Bela Lugosi in the title role. This film established many of the tropes and conventions that are still associated with vampire films today, including the image of Dracula with slicked back hair and a cape, and his aversion to garlic and crucifixes. Over the years, there have been numerous other film adaptations of Dracula, ranging from faithful retellings to loose reinterpretations. Some notable examples include the 1979 version starring Frank Langella, the 1992 version starring Gary Oldman, and the 2013 NBC television series Dracula, which starred Jonathan Rhys Myers in the title role. In addition to film and television adaptations, there have also been numerous stage adaptations of Dracula. One of the most notable is the Broadway production of Dracula that starred Frank Langella in 1977. The play was a critical and commercial success and helped to cement Langella's status as one of the greatest actors to portray the Count on stage. The continued popularity of Dracula adaptations shows that the story and character remain as compelling and enduring as ever. With each new interpretation, artists find new ways to explore the themes of power, desire, and mortality that are at the heart of vampire mythology. In the 1950s and 60s, Hammer Film Productions produced a series of horror films that helped to popularize the vampire even further. These films, which included titles like Dracula and The Brides of Dracula, featured colorful costumes, lavish sets, and plenty of blood and gore. In the 1970s and 80s, the vampire continued to evolve on film, 
with movies like The Hunger and Fright Night introducing new twists on the genre. The Hunger featured a lesbian vampire love story, while Fright Night was a horror comedy that poked fun at the traditional vampire tropes. In the 1990s, The Vampire continued to captivate audiences on both the big and small screens. The hit television series Buffy the Vampire Slayer redefined the way vampires were portrayed, depicting them as both dangerous and sympathetic characters. If Dracula is the king of vampire literature, Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles is undoubtedly the queen. When Interview with the Vampire was published in 1976, it was a game changer for vampire literature. Unlike the bloodthirsty monsters of traditional vampire stories, Rice's vampires were complex and nuanced characters, struggling with the existential questions that come with immortality. At the heart of Interview with the Vampire is the character of Louis, a vampire who is struggling to come to terms with his new existence. Through his conversations with the reporter who is interviewing him, Louis reflects on the nature of life, death, and the human condition, offering a philosophical perspective on the vampire mythos that was previously unseen. The success of Interview with the Vampire paved the way for a new generation of vampire literature, with other writers taking inspiration from Rice's portrayal of vampires as complex and multi-dimensional characters. The book was also adapted into a successful film in 1994, further solidifying its place in popular culture. Beyond its impact on the vampire genre, Interview with the Vampire also had an important cultural impact. At a time when the gay rights movement was beginning to gain momentum, the book's portrayal of homoerotic themes and alternative forms of sexuality resonated with many readers, leading some to interpret the story as a metaphor for the struggle for queer acceptance and identity. Today, Rice's work continues to be celebrated for its contribution to the vampire genre and its lasting impact on popular culture. Her vampire novels have sold over 100 million copies worldwide and have been adapted into numerous films and television shows, further cementing her place as one of the most influential writers in the vampire canon. While Interview with the Vampire delved into a world of gothic horror and romance, vampires in film have also evolved to include a wide range of genres beyond traditional horror. One of the earliest subgenres was the vampire comedy, which began in the 1940s with films like Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein and The Ghost Breakers. These movies often used humor to diffuse the fear of the supernatural and helped to popularize the image of vampires as suave, sophisticated figures. In the 1960s and 70s, the vampire film genre saw a resurgence with the rise of Hammer Horror and other studios producing gothic horror films. These movies often featured high production values, elaborate costumes and sets, and iconic performances from actors like Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. The 1980s saw a shift towards a more action-oriented approach to vampire films, with movies like The Lost Boys and Fright Night blending horror with comedy and teen angst. These films introduced a new generation of viewers to the vampire mythos and helped to establish the genre as a lucrative commercial venture. While the Hammer films of the 60s and 70s continued the tradition of gothic horror, the 1980s and 1990s saw a reimagining of vampire films, with The Lost Boys and Buffy the Vampire Slayer films, as well as Francis Ford Coppola's 1992 adaptation of Dracula featuring Gary Oldman as the titular character. The late 2000s and 2010s saw the release of successful vampire franchises such as Twilight and Underworld, as well as critically acclaimed films such as Let the Right One In. With the arrival of the Blade franchise in the late 1990s, vampire mythology was given a fresh new makeover, one that was distinctly different from what audiences had seen before. Rather than being portrayed as romantic and brooding, the titular character Blade was a tough, no-nonsense vampire hunter who used his strength and agility to take down his blood-sucking prey. This new iteration of the vampire mythos was a perfect fit for the action genre, as it featured dynamic fight scenes and intense action sequences that audiences had never seen before. Blade was first introduced to audiences in the 1970s as a supporting character in Marvel Comics. The character was created by writer Marv Wolfman and artist Gene Colan, and quickly became a fan favorite. In 1998, Blade made the leap from the page to the screen, with actor Wesley Snipes taking on the role of the eponymous hero. The first film in the franchise, simply titled Blade, 
was a surprise hit at the box office. It grossed over $130 million worldwide and was praised for its stylish action sequences and innovative special effects. The film's success led to two sequels, Blade II and Blade Trinity, which were released in 2002 and 2004 respectively. One of the reasons the Blade franchise was so successful was its ability to create a world that was both believable and engaging. Rather than portraying vampires as supernatural beings, the films grounded their mythology in science. Vampires were not immortal creatures, but rather a different species that had evolved alongside humans. They were vulnerable to sunlight and silver, and could only be killed by beheading or exposure to ultraviolet light. The franchise also introduced the concept of the Daywalker, a vampire who was immune to sunlight. Blade himself was a Daywalker, thanks to a serum that had been injected into him by his mother while he was still in the womb. This added an extra layer of complexity to the character, as he struggled with his own identity and place in the world. Another innovative aspect of the Blade franchise was its portrayal of vampires as a secret society, operating behind the scenes of human society. The films explored the political and social structures of the vampire world, showing how different clans and factions competed for power and influence. This added a level of intrigue and mystery to the films, and helped to create a world that felt fully realized and lived in. The Blade franchise had a major impact on vampire mythology in popular culture. Its success paved the way for other action-oriented takes on the genre, such as Underworld and Van Helsing. It also helped to move the vampire away from the romantic and eroticized portrayals that had dominated the genre in the previous decades, and towards a more action-oriented and science-based approach. In addition, the franchise introduced a new generation of viewers to the world of comic book adaptations, paving the way for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the explosion of superhero films in the years since. The Blade franchise was a major turning point in the evolution of vampire mythology. It helped to redefine the genre, infusing it with a new sense of energy and excitement that captured the imaginations of audiences around the world. Whether you're a fan of the franchise or just a casual observer, there's no denying the impact that Blade has had on popular culture and the vampire mythos as a whole. On the other end of the vampire genre spectrum is the 1997 TV show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. When Buffy premiered, it quickly became a cultural phenomenon that transformed the way vampires were portrayed in popular culture. While vampires had long been a staple of horror and gothic fiction, Buffy presented a new and innovative take on these creatures of the night, turning traditional vampire mythology on its head and redefining the way that vampires were depicted in film and television. At the heart of the Buffy series was its titular character, a teenage girl who is chosen to be the Slayer, a supernatural warrior tasked with fighting vampires and other demons. Unlike traditional portrayals of vampire hunters, however, Buffy was not a brooding and tortured hero, but rather a sharp-tongued, empowered, and occasionally vulnerable teenager who faced the same struggles and anxieties as her peers. This new approach to vampire mythology was reflected in the show's depiction of vampires themselves, which were no longer simply one-dimensional monsters, but rather complex and multifaceted characters with their own motivations, backstories, and emotions. The vampires in Buffy were often depicted as tormented and conflicted figures, struggling with the immortality and power that came with their condition, and frequently seeking redemption or human connection. The show also explored themes of power and control, particularly with regard to the character of Angel, a vampire with a soul who became Buffy's love interest. Angel's story was an exploration of the idea that power corrupts, and that even a vampire with a soul was still capable of doing terrible things. This theme would be echoed in other works of vampire fiction, including the Twilight series. Perhaps the most significant innovation of Buffy, however, was its use of humor and satire to subvert traditional vampire tropes. From the recurring character of Spike, a sarcastic and lovable vampire with a punk rock aesthetic, to the various big bads that Buffy and her friends battled throughout the series, Buffy used humor and irreverence to challenge traditional notions of power, gender, and identity. The show featured vampires as major characters, but instead of portraying them as seductive and alluring figures, they were depicted as grotesque monsters who were often played for laughs. In this way, 
The show challenged the traditional portrayal of vampires as romantic and alluring figures, and instead presented them as dark and dangerous creatures who needed to be destroyed. In addition to its groundbreaking portrayal of vampires, Buffy was also notable for its use of metaphors to explore complex issues of adolescence, sexuality, and identity. From the recurring theme of high school is hell, to the exploration of sexual identity and consent in episodes like The Body and Once More with Feeling. Buffy used its supernatural elements to reflect and comment on the real-world struggles of its viewers, making it a show that was both entertaining and socially relevant. The impact of Buffy on popular culture was profound and enduring, inspiring a generation of fans and creators and paving the way for a new wave of supernatural television shows and films. From the Buffy spin-off Angel to the vampire romance of Twilight, the influence of Buffy can be seen in countless works of popular culture, and its legacy continues to resonate with viewers today. In many ways, Buffy the Vampire Slayer redefined what it meant to be a vampire in popular culture, moving away from traditional horror tropes and toward a more complex, nuanced, and entertaining portrayal of these creatures of the night. By giving vampires depth, humor, and humanity, Buffy opened the door to a new era of supernatural storytelling and reminded us of the enduring power of the vampire as a symbol of human fears and desires. In 2008, the vampire film genre was redefined yet again when HBO premiered True Blood, a television series based on the Southern Vampire Mysteries novels by Charlene Harris. The show, which ran for seven seasons, quickly became a cultural phenomenon captivating audiences with its unique blend of horror, drama, and romance. True Blood was set in Louisiana, where vampires had recently come out of the coffin and revealed themselves to the world. The show explored the relationships between vampires and humans, as well as the political and social implications of vampire integration into society. One of the most notable aspects of True Blood was its portrayal of vampires. Unlike many previous depictions of vampires, the vampires in True Blood were not portrayed as purely evil or monstrous. Instead, they were complex characters with their own desires, fears, and moral codes. The show also introduced new vampire mythology, such as the concept of maker vampires and the ability of vampires to glamour humans. True Blood had a significant impact on vampire mythology in popular culture. The show's portrayal of vampires as complex, sympathetic characters helped to shift the perception of vampires away from traditional horror tropes and towards more nuanced and empathetic portrayals. The show also explored issues of discrimination and prejudice, as the integration of vampires into society was met with opposition and hostility from some humans. This theme resonated with many viewers and helped to make True Blood a commentary on real-world social issues. In addition to its impact on vampire mythology, True Blood was also notable for its impact on television. The show was a critical and commercial success, earning multiple Emmy nominations and inspiring a number of other supernatural-themed television shows, such as The Vampire Diaries and Being Human. The show also helped to popularize the concept of binge-watching, as viewers eagerly consumed entire seasons of the show in a single sitting. True Blood also pioneered the use of social media in television marketing, with the show's official Twitter account and Facebook page serving as hubs for fan engagement and discussion. True Blood was a groundbreaking series that helped to redefine the way vampires were portrayed in popular culture. The show's complex characters and social commentary made it a cultural touchstone, inspiring a new wave of supernatural-themed television shows. And then there's Twilight, the elephant in the room when it comes to vampire mythology. While the series has been widely criticized by some hardcore vampire fans for its glittering vampires and sparkling skin, there's no denying the impact it had on vampire mythology and popular culture. Before Twilight, vampires were often portrayed as bloodthirsty creatures of the night, feared and reviled by humans. But with Maya's series, vampires became more sympathetic and romanticized. Edward Cullen, the series' male protagonist, is a vampire who struggles with his desire for human blood and falls in love with Bella Swan, a mortal high school student. The series also introduced the idea of vegetarian vampires, who subsist on animal blood instead of human blood. The popularity of Twilight and its subsequent film adaptations resulted in a resurgence of interest in vampires in popular culture, 
with other books and movies following in its wake. The success of Twilight also contributed to the vampire craze of the late 2000s and early 2010s, with vampire-themed merchandise and events becoming a major trend. While the Twilight series may have its flaws, it's hard to deny its impact on popular culture and vampire mythology. Love it or hate it, it changed the way we think about vampires and their place in our society. When Steffi Meyer's Twilight series became a cultural phenomenon, the media dubbed it the vampire craze, and it seemed like everyone was suddenly talking about vampires again. With this renewed interest in vampires, there was a proliferation of TV shows featuring vampires as main characters, and one of the most popular was The Vampire Diaries. The Vampire Diaries was based on a book series of the same name by L.J. Smith, but the TV show took the story in its own direction, introducing new characters and plot lines that weren't in the books. The show premiered in 2009 and ran for eight seasons, following the lives of the Salvatore brothers, Stefan and Damon, as they navigated life as vampires in the small town of Mystic Falls. One of the reasons The Vampire Diaries was so successful was its ability to appeal to both teenagers and adults. The show had all the elements of a classic teen drama, with a love triangle at its center and plenty of angst and drama. But it also had enough adult themes and complex characters to keep older viewers engaged. Another reason for the show's success was its strong cast, led by Ian Summerholder and Paul Wesley as the Salvatore brothers. The two actors had great chemistry on screen, and their portrayal of the complicated relationship between Stefan and Damon was a major draw for viewers. Like many other vampire TV shows, the Vampire Diaries explored themes of love, loss, and the struggle between good and evil. But it also had a strong emphasis on family, with the relationships between the characters often taking center stage. The show was also notable for its willingness to take risks and not shy away from the darker aspects of its storylines. Characters died regularly, sometimes in shocking ways, and the show wasn't afraid to take on difficult topics like addiction, suicide, and grief. The Originals, a spin-off of The Vampire Diaries, premiered in 2013 and ran for five seasons. The show followed the lives of the original vampire family, who returned to their hometown of New Orleans and become embroiled in a power struggle with witches, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. The Originals was praised for its strong writing, direction, and performances, as well as its intricate mythology and world-building. The Vampire Diaries was a significant contribution to the vampire genre in popular culture. Its success helped cement vampires as a mainstay in popular culture, and it paved the way for other vampire TV shows like True Blood and The Originals. The backlash to Twilight's young adult approach to vampire mythology was swift and harsh, as illustrated by The Strain. This novel series by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan, and its television adaptation, presented a new twist on the traditional vampire mythos. The strain tells the story of an ancient strain of vampirism that spreads rapidly throughout New York City. The vampires in this universe are not the suave, sexy creatures of previous iterations, but grotesque and monstrous beings that look more like worms than people. They infect their victims with a mysterious virus that transforms them into mindless creatures who are unable to resist the vampire's commands. One of the most interesting aspects of The Strain is the way it blends science fiction and horror to create a unique take on vampire mythology. Del Toro and Hogan present a scientific explanation for vampirism, as the virus is transmitted through a parasitic worm that enters the bloodstream and takes over the host's body. This blend of science and supernatural horror sets The Strain apart from other vampire stories and provides a fresh new angle on the mythos. The television adaptation of The Strain aired on FX from 2014 to 2017 and was well received by critics and audiences alike. The show stayed true to the source material and expanded on the story and characters in interesting ways. The special effects used to bring the vampires to life were especially impressive and the show's attention to detail in creating the unique look and feel of the vampire virus helped to cement The Strain as a standout addition to the vampire genre. In addition to its unique take on vampire mythology, The Strain also touches on themes of power, corruption, and humanity's ability to adapt in the face of overwhelming odds. The show's protagonists, led by the determined and resourceful Dr. Ephraim Goodweather, 
fight to save humanity from the vampire threat, even as their own personal lives crumble around them. The strain had a significant impact on the way vampires were portrayed in popular culture. Its blend of science fiction and horror, grotesque and unique vampire design, and exploration of themes beyond the supernatural have made it a standout addition to the genre. From books and movies to TV shows, we have to ask ourselves one question. Why is the vampire such an enduring mythology? The answer may lie in its ability to help us make sense of real-life horror. The vampire has long been used as a metaphor for a wide range of societal issues, reflecting the fears, desires, and anxieties of different cultures and time periods. From addiction to sexual identity, the vampire has been used to explore and interrogate some of the most pressing issues of our times. One of the most common uses of the vampire as a metaphor is to explore addiction and substance abuse. The vampire's need for blood, which is often depicted as an insatiable hunger, can be seen as a reflection of the all-consuming nature of addiction and the way that it can consume an individual's life and identity. In vampire fiction and film, this metaphor is often explored through depictions of the vampire as a tragic figure, struggling to control their urges and avoid the negative consequences of their addiction. The vampire has also been used as a metaphor for sexual identity and desire. In some vampire stories, the act of being bitten by a vampire is depicted as a sensual or erotic experience, with the vampire serving as a representation of forbidden or unconventional desires. This metaphor is often used to explore themes of sexual repression and the struggle for self-acceptance, with the vampire serving as a symbol of those who are marginalized or excluded from mainstream society. In addition to addiction and sexual identity, the vampire has also been used as a metaphor for a wide range of other issues, including power and control, mortality, and the struggle for individual identity in the face of conformity. In each of these cases, the vampire serves as a powerful symbol of human fears and desires, reflecting the ways in which these issues can consume and transform us, for better or for worse. Perhaps one of the most powerful aspects of the vampire as a metaphor is its ability to resonate across time and culture. Despite the many different ways in which the vampire has been used to explore different issues, its core qualities of immortality, power, and otherness remain constant, making it a powerful symbol for generations to come. As our society continues to grapple with issues of addiction, sexual identity, and the struggle for individuality, the vampire will likely continue to serve as a potent metaphor for the human experience, reflecting our deepest hopes and fears about the mysteries of life and death, and reminding us of the enduring power of the human imagination to transform and illuminate our world. As society has reacted to these complex social issues, one method of confronting challenging times has been to embrace the darkness. Vampires, it seems, offer the perfect vehicle to do just that. Our fascination with the undead has given rise to a subculture of individuals who embrace the vampire lifestyle. These people may participate in vampire role-playing, dress in gothic clothing, and even engage in blood-drinking rituals. The vampire subculture has been influenced by popular culture representations of vampires in literature, film, and television. Many people in the vampire subculture draw inspiration from characters like Dracula, and they may adopt similar fashion styles or mannerisms. While some people in the vampire subculture claim to be real vampires, meaning they require blood to survive, many others simply embrace the romanticized imagery and mythology of vampires. This subculture is not limited to any one demographic and includes people from all walks of life, including artists, musicians, and writers. One aspect of the vampire subculture that draws the most attention is blood drinking rituals. Some individuals who identify as vampires may drink blood as a part of their lifestyle. However, it's important to note that consuming blood carries serious health risks, and it is not recommended. These rituals may involve drinking the blood of willing donors or using sterile blades to make small cuts on the skin to allow for small amounts of blood to be consumed. The vampire subculture has also given rise to various social groups and organizations. These groups provide opportunities for people who share an interest in vampires to connect with each other, share information, and discuss various aspects of the vampire lifestyle. 
One such organization is the Vampire Court of Austin, a social club that hosts events and gatherings for members of the vampire subculture. Other groups, such as the House of the Dreaming or the Court of Lazarus, have similar goals of providing a community for those interested in the vampire subculture. Despite the many positive aspects of the vampire subculture, there are some concerns about the potential risks involved. For example, some individuals may not fully understand the risks of blood drinking rituals or may engage in risky behaviors that could lead to serious health consequences. Additionally, there is a risk of reinforcing harmful stereotypes and misunderstandings about vampires. This can create tension between the vampire subculture and mainstream society and perpetuate negative attitudes towards those who identify with the vampire lifestyle. The vampire subculture is a diverse and complex phenomenon that reflects our enduring fascination with the undead. While the subculture has given rise to many positive social groups and communities, there are also potential risks and concerns that must be taken seriously. Ultimately, the vampire subculture serves as a reminder of the power of myth and imagination to shape our lives and identities. Along with the development of a vampire culture came a new way of looking at the mythology of vampirism through the lens of science. While the idea of a supernatural vampire may be purely mythical, there are scientific explanations for some of the behaviors associated with vampires. In particular, there are two medical conditions that have been suggested as possible explanations for the vampire myth, porphyria and rabies. Porphyria is a group of genetic disorders that affect the production of heme, a component of hemoglobin that carries oxygen in the blood. In some forms of porphyria, exposure to sunlight can cause painful skin lesions and blistering. This has led some researchers to suggest that the vampire myth may have originated as a way to explain the symptoms of porphyria. Similarly, rabies is a viral disease that affects the central nervous system, causing symptoms such as aggression, hyperactivity, and a fear of water. The disease is most commonly transmitted through the bite of an infected animal, and there have been documented cases of humans with rabies exhibiting vampire-like behaviors, such as biting and attacking others. Clinical vampirism, also known as Renfield syndrome, is a rare psychiatric disorder characterized by a fixation on blood and an obsession with drinking it. Individuals with this disorder may be drawn to vampire mythology as a means of expressing their desires and may even engage in blood drinking or bloodletting behaviors. While clinical vampirism is rare and only affects a small number of people, it has been the subject of scientific study and has been explored in popular culture. While these medical conditions may offer some explanation for the behaviors associated with vampires, they do not account for the supernatural aspects of the myth, such as immortality or the ability to transform into a bat. Instead, these scientific explanations help to illustrate how cultural beliefs and medical knowledge can shape the way we perceive and interpret certain behaviors. Despite the availability of scientific explanations, the vampire myth continues to endure as a powerful cultural symbol. Whether we see the vampire as a seductive and dangerous creature or a tragic victim of circumstance, its enduring appeal speaks to our fascination with mortality and the unknown. From science to subcultures and an avalanche of TV shows and movies, vampires have become ingrained into our collective psyche, influencing and being influenced by everything from art to architecture, music and video games. When we think of vampires, we often picture spooky castles, ancient ruins, and dark, foreboding mansions. These architectural elements have become synonymous with the horror genre and are often used to create a sense of dread and unease in vampire stories. The Gothic style of architecture, in particular, has become closely associated with vampire mythology. Gothic architecture originated in Europe in the 12th century and was characterized by its pointed arches, ribbed vaults, and elaborate stone carvings. The style was used to create massive, ornate buildings that often had a foreboding, almost menacing appearance. Many of the most famous vampire stories are set in Gothic buildings. Bram Stoker's Dracula, for example, takes place in a castle that perfectly embodies the Gothic aesthetic. The castle is described as having towers and battlements and high Gothic windows, creating a sense of ancient grandeur and dark mystery. The Gothic style has also been used to create some of the most iconic vampire films of all time. 
In F.W. Manau's 1922 classic Nosferatu, the titular vampire is depicted as a dark, looming figure who inhabits a gothic castle that perfectly embodies the foreboding nature of the genre. Similarly, in Francis Ford Coppola's 1992 adaptation of Dracula, the castle is an imposing structure that is both beautiful and terrifying. The use of gothic architecture in vampire stories has even influenced the design of modern-day buildings. Gothic elements can be seen in everything from shopping malls to office buildings, as architects seek to capture the eerie, ethereal quality of the style. Gothic architecture has become so closely associated with vampires that it's difficult to imagine one without the other. The dark, foreboding castles, the towering spires, and the intricate carvings all create a sense of ancient grandeur and mystery that perfectly embodies the supernatural elements of the vampire mythos. Another key element that has contributed to vampire culture is music. Music has always been a powerful way to evoke emotion and atmosphere, and this is certainly true when it comes to vampires. From classical compositions to modern pop songs, vampires have been a common theme in music for centuries. One of the most famous pieces of music featuring vampires is Franz Liszt's Mephisto Waltz No. 1. Inspired by the legend of the vampire and the devil, the piece is both eerie and beautiful, evoking the seductive power of the vampire. In more recent years, pop music has embraced the vampire theme as well. Michael Jackson's thriller music video is one of the most famous examples, with its iconic scene of zombies rising from the grave to dance alongside Jackson. Other pop artists have incorporated the vampire theme into their music as well. Lady Gaga's Monster and Bad Romance both feature vampire imagery and themes of obsession and desire, while Katy Perry's Dark Horse includes references to vampirism and the occult. Rock music has also been influenced by vampires, with bands like Typo Negative and The 69 Eyes incorporating the vampire theme into their music and imagery. Marilyn Manson's If I Was Your Vampire is another notable example, exploring the dark, seductive allure of the vampire. Classical and pop music aren't the only genres to feature vampire themes, however. Heavy metal and gothic rock bands have been particularly drawn to the vampire mythos, with many using vampiric imagery and themes of blood, death, and immortality. Some of the most popular vampire-themed songs in these genres include Vampire Heart by Him, Bloodletting, the vampire song by Concrete Blonde, and Bloodbath and Beyond by Ice Nine Kills. In addition to using vampire themes in their music, many of these bands have incorporated vampire imagery into their stage shows and music videos, creating an immersive experience for their fans. The influence of vampire mythology on music shows just how pervasive and enduring the vampire legend has been throughout history. In addition to film, music and literature, vampires have also been a popular subject in art. From traditional paintings to modern graphic novels, vampires have been depicted in a variety of styles throughout history. One of the earliest and most famous vampire depictions in art is John William Polidori's portrait of Lord Byron as a vampire. The portrait was created during the famous summer of 1816, when Byron and Polidori were in Switzerland with Percy Shelley and Mary Shelley. The group was inspired to write ghost stories, and it was during this time that Polidori created the first vampire story in English, The Vampire. Polidori's portrait of Byron as a vampire became one of the most famous depictions of the literary figure and helped to cement the image of the vampire as a seductive and aristocratic figure. In the 20th century, Vampires continued to be a popular subject in art, particularly in the horror and gothic genres. Some notable examples include Vampire by Edvard Munch, The Vampire by Philip Byrne Jones, and Nosferatu by Egon Schiel. In the 21st century, vampires have continued to inspire artists, particularly in the realm of graphic novels and comic books. Examples include 30 Days of Night by Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith, American Vampire by Scott Snyder and Raphael Albuquerque, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer by Joss Whedon and various artists. The depiction of vampires in art has evolved along with the evolution of vampire mythology in other media. From seductive and aristocratic figures to monstrous and terrifying creatures, artists have interpreted the vampire in a variety of ways, reflecting the changing cultural attitudes towards these mythical beings. Beyond traditional art, Vampire mythology has also long been associated with fashion and style. 
from Dracula's iconic cape to the goth subculture of the 80s and 90s. The influence of vampires on fashion is evident in everything from clothing to makeup to accessories, with many individuals embracing the dark, romantic aesthetic of the vampire. The popularity of vampire fashion has waxed and waned over the years, with certain trends coming and going. For example, the goth subculture of the 80s and 90s embraced black clothing, heavy makeup, and dramatic hairstyles, all of which were inspired in part by vampire mythology. Similarly, the popularity of the Twilight franchise in the late 2000s led to a surge in interest in vampire-inspired clothing, with many retailers offering clothing and accessories featuring vampire imagery. One trend that has remained constant, however, is the influence of Gothic architecture on fashion. Gothic architecture is characterized by ornate intricate details, pointed arches, and dramatic vaulted ceilings, and has long been associated with the dark, brooding aesthetic of vampire mythology. This influence can be seen in everything from Victorian-style lace and ruffles to heavy boots and jewellery, featuring skulls and other macabre motifs. Another trend that has emerged in recent years is the use of vampire-inspired makeup. Many beauty brands now offer makeup products in shades of deep red and black, perfect for creating a dramatic, vampy look. Additionally, makeup artists have embraced the use of prosthetics and other special effects to create vampire-inspired looks complete with fake fangs, red contact lenses, and other spooky details. In terms of accessories, vampire-inspired jewelry has become increasingly popular in recent years. Pieces featuring skulls, bats, and other macabre motifs are often worn as a nod to vampire mythology, while more subtle pieces, such as black chokers and delicate necklaces, are a nod to the romantic, gothic aesthetic often associated with vampires. The influence of vampire fashion extends far beyond individual style, with many designers and fashion houses drawing inspiration from vampire mythology in their collections. For example, in 2015, Alexander McQueen showcased a collection featuring flowing, romantic dresses with intricate lace and ruffle details, all of which were reminiscent of Gothic architecture and the romantic aesthetic often associated with vampire mythology. Similarly, in 2018, Rodart presented a collection inspired by Bram Stoker's Dracula, featuring delicate lace dresses and other pieces that were equal parts dark and romantic. The influence of vampire mythology on fashion and style is undeniable. From Gothic architecture to dramatic makeup and accessories, the dark, romantic aesthetic of vampires has long captured the imaginations of fashion lovers around the world. Whether worn as a nod to goth subculture or embraced as a timeless trend, the allure of vampire-inspired fashion is likely to endure for many years to come. The modern vampire isn't satisfied to remain in the pages of books or even on the silver screen. It sets its sights on the newest pop culture phenomenon, video games. Vampires have made their way into numerous video games, with various developers crafting different interpretations of the myth. In many video games, vampires are portrayed as powerful, immortal beings with superhuman strength speed, and other abilities. They often serve as the primary antagonists, challenging the player to overcome their immense power and vanquish them. One of the most iconic vampire video game series is the Castlevania franchise. Castlevania debuted in 1986, and over the years, it has become one of the most well-known and beloved game franchises of all time. The series has seen numerous entries, each one pitting the player against Dracula, his minions, and various other supernatural creatures. The games are known for their challenging gameplay, intricate level design, and epic boss battles. Another popular vampire game is Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. This game, released in 2004, is a first-person role-playing game set in modern-day Los Angeles. The player assumes the role of a newly turned vampire and must navigate the complex and dangerous world of vampire politics. The game is praised for its storytelling, immersive world, and innovative gameplay mechanics. The Legacy of Cain series is another well-known vampire game franchise. The series debuted in 1996 and has since seen numerous sequels and spin-offs. The games feature complex narratives, memorable characters, and thrilling action gameplay. The series is known for its dark gothic aesthetic and its exploration of complex philosophical themes. In recent years, 
The vampire genre has seen a resurgence in video games, with the release of titles like Vampire and Code Vein. These games take a more narrative-driven approach, focusing on player choice and character development. Vampire, for example, puts the player in the role of a doctor who is turned into a vampire and must balance his need for blood with his desire to help his patients during the Spanish flu epidemic. The vampire genre has also found its way into numerous other game genres, such as fighting games, first-person shooters, and massively multiplayer online games. Games like Darkstalkers, The Elder Scrolls, and World of Darkness have all featured memorable vampire characters and storylines. Vampires have made a lasting impact on the world of video games. From classic franchises like Castlevania to newer narrative-driven titles like Vampire, the vampire myth has been explored and reinterpreted in countless ways. Vampires continue to be a popular subject in gaming, and it's safe to say that they will continue to be a part of the video game landscape in the coming decades. Another influence on vampire mythology comes from a genre you might not expect, science fiction. Vampires have been a staple of science fiction since the genre's inception. From the earliest pulp novels to modern-day cyberpunk, vampires have appeared in a variety of science fiction stories, often taking on unique and innovative roles. One of the most famous examples of vampire science fiction is Richard Matheson's novel, I Am Legend. Published in 1954, the book tells the story of Robert Neville, the last surviving human in a world overrun by vampires. The novel, which explores themes of loneliness, isolation, and the human need for connection, has been highly influential in the science fiction genre and has been adapted for film several times. In the space opera subgenre of science fiction, vampires have also made an appearance. In the Vampire Earth series by E.E. E. Knight, vampires are an alien species that invades Earth and enslaves humanity. The series follows a group of human rebels as they fight against the vampire overlords and struggle to take back their planet. Vampires have also been featured in cyberpunk, a subgenre of science fiction that focuses on a gritty dystopian future where technology has advanced to the point of blending with human biology. Another example of vampire science fiction can be found in the Blood Rain video game series, which follows the adventures of Rain, a half-human, half-vampire hybrid. The games, which are set in an alternate history where vampires and other supernatural creatures are real, allow players to use Rain's vampire abilities to battle against her enemies. Vampires have also appeared in the realm of science fiction television. In the Star Trek franchise, the episode The Man Trap featured a creature that fed on salt and could shape-shift into different humanoids, drawing comparisons to vampires. Vampires have played a unique and important role in science fiction, allowing writers and creators to explore themes of identity, power, and mortality in a new and exciting way. Whether appearing in classic novels like I Am Legend or modern-day video games like Blood Rain, vampires continue to captivate and terrify audiences in the realm of science fiction. With so much focus on vampire mythology, a new question began to arise. What was its impact on modern society? In recent years, there has been a growing interest in the ethical considerations surrounding vampire mythology, especially in the wake of the Twilight franchise's success. The portrayal of vampires in popular media has a significant impact on public perception, and as such, there has been a great deal of debate around whether or not these depictions are harmful or problematic. One of the main concerns surrounding the portrayal of vampires is the romanticization of abusive relationships. In many vampire stories, the romantic relationships between humans and vampires are portrayed as being passionate and intense, often to the point of being unhealthy or abusive. This has led to criticism from some quarters that such portrayals can lead to real-world harm, especially in terms of normalizing abusive behavior in relationships. Additionally, the portrayal of vampires as being wealthy, powerful, and glamorous can also be seen as problematic, as it reinforces existing power imbalances and privilege in society. Many critics have argued that the romanticization of wealth and power can contribute to real-world inequalities and perpetuate harmful stereotypes. However, there are also those who argue that vampire mythology can be a powerful tool for exploring complex ethical and philosophical issues. For example, the themes of mortality and immortality that are often associated with vampires 
can be used to explore questions around the meaning of life and the nature of the human condition. Similarly, the portrayal of vampires as outsiders can be used to explore issues of identity, belonging, and marginalization. Ultimately, the question of vampire ethics is a complex and nuanced one, and there are no easy answers. While some may argue that vampire mythology is harmful and problematic, others believe that it can be a valuable tool for exploring important philosophical and ethical issues. As with any form of media, it is up to individual readers and viewers to decide for themselves what they believe and to engage critically with the media that they consume. Regardless of your thoughts on the impact of vampire imagery in society, nobody can deny that these bloodsuckers reflect our deepest fears and desires. The psychological implications of vampire mythology are vast and fascinating. One of the most common themes in vampire stories is the desire for eternal life, which reflects the human fear of mortality. Vampires are often portrayed as immortal beings who live forever, and this idea can be both alluring and frightening. On one hand, the idea of living forever can be appealing. Immortality means never having to face the inevitability of death and the possibility of experiencing all the world has to offer without the limitation of time. But on the other hand, eternal life also means watching everyone you know and love die and never being able to escape the constant cycle of loss and grief. This fear of mortality and desire for eternal life is not a new concept and it has been explored in literature and mythology for centuries. Vampires are just one example of this theme, and their popularity in modern culture reflects the ongoing human fascination with the concept of immortality. Another psychological theme in vampire mythology is addiction. Many modern vampire stories portray blood drinking as an addiction, with the vampire unable to control their desire for blood. This idea is especially prominent in Anne Rice's interview with the vampire, where the main character, Louis, struggles with his desire for blood and the guilt he feels for the lives he takes. This metaphor of addiction can be applied to many different aspects of human behavior, from substance abuse to compulsive behaviors. In this way, vampire stories can serve as a cautionary tale, warning of the dangers of giving in to our most primal desires. Finally, vampire mythology has also been used as a metaphor for sexual identity. Many modern vampire stories explore the idea of the vampire as a symbol of sexual fluidity, with the vampire able to transcend traditional gender roles and sexual boundaries. This theme is especially prominent in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where the character of Willow undergoes a transformation from a timid, shy girl to a powerful and confident witch. Her relationship with Tara, another female character, is portrayed as a natural and beautiful love story breaking down traditional notions of gender and sexual identity. The psychological implications of vampire mythology are far-reaching and complex. From the fear of mortality to addiction and sexuality, vampire stories provide a way to explore these themes in a fantastical and engaging way. As long as humans continue to grapple with these universal issues, the appeal of vampire mythology will endure. From ancient myths to modern pop culture, vampires continue to fascinate and intrigue us with their seductive powers and darker lore. While the folklore and mythology of vampires may have originated in the fears and beliefs of our ancestors, their impact on our culture today goes far beyond the realm of superstition. Vampires have become a metaphor for some of our deepest fears and desires, symbolizing everything from mortality to sexual identity. They've inspired countless works of literature, film and art, and have even influenced the way we dress and style ourselves. But why do we continue to be so captivated by these creatures of the night? Perhaps it's because they represent something that's both alluring and dangerous, something that we can't quite put our finger on, but that draws us in nonetheless. Or maybe it's because the idea of eternal life is a fantasy that we all secretly harbor, even if we know it's impossible. Whatever the reason, one thing is certain, vampires aren't going away anytime soon. As long as we continue to grapple with our own mortality and search for meaning in the mysteries of life, these immortal creatures will continue to haunt our dreams and spark our imaginations. So let's raise a glass of red wine, or perhaps something a little stronger, to the vampires of legend and lore, and to the ways in which they've shaped our world and our culture.